Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing an exercise here now, uh, applying what we've learned over the last uh, few uh, videos. Uh, these are uh, the, uh, this, these are a series of exercises that I've used in the past in this course before, uh, or in a CS1 course. Uh, so one of these is computing. Uh, the first one of these is going to be computing uh, the entropy uh, of a string. The entropy is just a measure of the amount of information in a string. If it's just a lot of random data, then we would say that that's high entropy. Uh, like if uh, if I just created a, a bunch of random bits and then tried to look at that, that would have a, a higher a high entropy uh, value. Uh, a low entropy, zero, for example, is the lowest that you can have, uh, would indicate highly structured data. So example, if you just had a string of all A's, there's not a lot of information in there. So that would be considered very low entropy. Low entropy is actually measured using the following Shannon entropy formula. Uh, which uh, don't worry about the details of this. Basically, what we need to do is we need to go through a string and count up the number of times each letter or each character appears. Uh, and that will give us the probability of seeing that character. So C sub xi is the ith character. That's the number of times it appears divided by the length of the string. That gives us the probability that if we sele randomly selected a uh, character out of that string, uh, that it would tell us uh, th that it would be that letter, right? Uh, it, let's take a look at an example here. Hello World has eight distinct symbols. The L is repeated three times. Uh, and so it has a count of three. Uh, and uh, there's a length of 11. So three divided by 11 is going to be 27%. In other words, if I selected randomly a letter out of this, there'd be a 27% probability uh, that uh, it would be an L, a lowercase L. Uh, o appears twice, so it has a probability of 18.18%. Uh, and all the remaining ones are distinct, uh, and therefore they have an equal probability of 1 out of 11, or 0 0.0909. And so if I apply that formula from before, where I take the probabilities and I multiply by the log of the probabilities, log base 2, uh, then I get this value right here. Uh, so this is a good exercise because it's string processing. It'll obviously involve a loop. Uh, basically, what we're going to have to do is, given this string right here, uh, we're going to have to go through and count up the number of capital H's. We're going to have to count up the number of lowercase e's, count up the number of L's, right? Uh, and, uh, and then compute each one of these probabilities, and then simply uh, apply this formula right here. So I'll create a new class here call it entropy. And just as a, uh, an initial design here, let me go ahead and create a string. And we're going to want to compute its entropy. And we'll be able to test this to see uh, if our code is correct. If we come out with the same answer, remember it was uh, 2.84 or thereabouts. So I need to iterate over the string and count up the number of uh, each type of letter there is. Uh, so if I look at the string library, right, I could get a character at each individual index, or I could convert it to a character array and then iterate over that character array. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do a simple for loop here and get each individual character of it. You can get the length of the string by using the dot length. That's not a property, that's a method because it's got parentheses here. For now, I'll just go ahead and print them out to show you that this is actually working. And you can see I'm printing them one to a line, including that, uh, that space there. Each time I go through, I should find, uh, I should count the number of uh, instances of that character. So for example, uh, if I start it, uh, at the first character, then I could have another for loop here that goes through every single one again and has a counter. Int count. And if, if the character at i matches the character at j, then I'll increment my counter. 
And I started it at zero so that when I and J are the same thing, I'm counting that one instance by itself, right? And at the end of this, I'll have a count of how many uh, of those I have. So let's go ahead and print that out. And when I do this, I get that there are three characters of L, I get that there's one character of H, one character of E, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll see the problem immediately here. Uh, the, the three characters of L, that's repeated three times, right? That's re repeated for each one of these instances, but I've got L here, L here, uh, L here, right? Um, so I could be clever about this and I could say, I could sort the characters, I could convert it to a character, uh, an array of characters and then sort them. And then I'll convert it back into that string. And when I do this, I've sorted that in lexicographic ordering. So that space comes first. I'm still getting three instances of L here, but at least now they're all together. I could probably be smart about this and rewrite my loops here so that I'm only iterating over it once, right? Uh, I'll say, all right, the first one is, is a space. All the spaces should be here if there are more of them. But if I look at the next one, it's not, it's H. So I only I know that I only have one of them. Move on to the next one. I've got H and I can move on, move on, move on. This sounds like a really daunting, t this sounds like really clever code if you can figure it out, right? And if I sit here for a while, I could figure it out. Uh, but remember one of the themes of this course is that smart data structures and dumb code are a lot better than the other way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smart data structure, a map. What this map is going to represent is each character will map to its count. And now all we have to do is iterate over each, char the, each character in the string once, pull that value, pull that count out of the map, increment it, and then put it back into the map. Right. We'll get the character, the ith character, and then we'll ask the map, have you seen this character before yet or not? It hasn't seen it before if it's null. And if it hasn't seen it before, then that means it's the first time we've encountered this character, and so we need to put it into the map. And I'll map it to zero here, because what we're gonna do after the if condition is we're going to update it. All right, so understand this code a little bit here. If it's the first time we've seen it, we map it to zero, right? A, a count of zero. Even though we've seen it for the first time, its count should be one. That's taken care of on line 20. We pull that zero out and add one to it and then put it back into the map, right? Now this has the advantage of taking care of both situations without an else statement. Uh, that if this is the second time that we've seen it, then it's going to have some value one, two, three, or whatever, uh, and we'll go. Uh, and so it skips this if condition and increments it by one. When we do this, we get that the space maps to one. There are three L's, there are two O's, and there's one ca character for the rest of them. Now all we have to do is use that to compute the uh, entropy. We'll create a sum variable, and then for each element in that map, for each character in the map's key set, we will get the count
We'll compute the ratio to get that probability. Probability is the count divided by the length. There is a problem here. We'll come back to it though and show you. And then we sum up the probability times the log of the probability. Uh, now you have to be careful here because if you read the documentation, this is going to be base E. We want base two. So to do this, we can use the change of base formula. I'll print out the sum. Now again, if we were correct on this, we should get about 2.84 but we get not a number. There are a couple of problems here. The issue is, as I said, this line right here. Remember that we've got an integer divided by an integer, uh, which means that we're going to have zeros everywhere. So when we try to take the logarithm of zero, we're going to get not a number. What we need to do is we need to do an explicit type conversion here to force one of them to become a double at least. We don't have to, we can force both of them to become a double, but it's not necessary, at least one of them. Now it's an integer divided by a double, and so we should get a better answer now. It's actually a neg uh, negation out front, so I'll just go ahead and put that negation there. And we've got our answer here, which matches the, uh, the test case that we were given in the example. I wanna show you one more thing here uh, before we continue with another exercise. Uh, what if I didn't want to always compute the entropy of hello world? What if I wanted uh, a, uh, a, a just any old string, right? Uh, I could prompt the user for it using a scanner on standard uh, on system.in, please enter a string and go ahead and, uh, and then, then process that string. Uh, but otherwise, it's uh, another way of, of doing this is through command line arguments, which are given up here in the main args, right? So uh, in Java, uh, the first command line argument is always the user provided command line argument. Some programming languages, the first argument is always the executable file name or the script name. Uh, but that's not it's not that way in Java because if you're inside this class, you know as a programmer what the class name is. So it's not necessary to put that into the arguments. Instead, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull out the first arg argument. And that's our string, okay? When I run this, of course, there's gonna be an exception because I did not provide any command line arguments here. Uh, so the way that you do that in Eclipse is you don't just go ahead and push play, you create a configuration. And over here in configuration, you can provide command line arguments. Now, if you're going to have, uh, command line arguments are delimited by spaces or white space. So if you want to, you can encapsulate those in double quotes apply that and run it, and I get the same answer as before. If I had not put those into double quotes, I would have gotten something, I would have only processed world instead, right? or sorry, hello. And I'm getting a completely different answer here uh, because if I print this out, h sub s like this, then I'm only processing hello. And of course, I'm not processing the double quotes there. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to encapsulate them in double quotes. Like this. Uh, let's do another test case. As I said before, if it is, uh, if it's all one letter, then we're going to have very low entropy. In fact, it's zero negative zero in this case, because I'm negating it. Uh, that's zero entropy because there's no information in it here at all. In the first example, when I did not provide any command line arguments, I got an exception. You can go ahead and write code to check for that. If args.length is not equal to one, then we'll go ahead and echo an error message instead. System. Now, instead of going to the standard output or reading from the standard input, there's also a standard error, right? This is why you're getting red text down here. It's because anything that's output to the standard error in the console is going to be marked up with red, at least with the default configuration. Right? 
We, it says that we need to provide a string. We can also exit with an exit code here. Otherwise, if they provide exactly one command line argument, it goes on and uh, computes everything. Right? So please provide a string. Well, okay, go ahead and provide it. We'll take a look at another exercise here.